Bushcraft 412 here and today I want to talk about the difference between cheap rifle scopes and expensive rifle rifle scopes um, but before we do that I just want to put a big thanks out there to everyone this channel has really been uh, picking up steam lately we're getting a lot more views and subscribers and I just want to put my thanks out there to everyone who's been a part of that uh, I really do appreciate the uh, private messages and comments that everyone's been leaving and the time people have been taking to uh, you know, correct me when I'm wrong. Uh, one of the things I do appreciate is when I do, you know, misspeak or say something that's just wrong. You know, that I read something wrong about a product that people do, you know, correct that and let me know when I make mistakes. Because, you know, if I'm putting out wrong information, you know, hey, let me know. Because I do appreciate it and want these videos to be as uh, authentic and genuine as possible. Uh, so once again, thanks to you guys for watching. Hoping to do a couple giveaways in the next couple of months. Because, uh, you know, like I said, the channel's picking up steam and uh, people have been clicking on the ads, which I really do appreciate. And so I'm hoping to pay everyone back by uh, a couple giveaways this uh, spring after Christmas. Uh, so the topic here today is good rifle scopes versus cheap rifle scopes. Now, in a couple of my videos, I have kind of defended buying cheap rifle scopes. And that's gotten me just an absolute multitude of comments from people saying that this is bad advice. Um, and I kind of want to defend this somewhat and explain myself a little bit further um, just to clear these things up. Now, there's certain things you're going to get with a cheap rifle scope and there's certain things you're going to get with an expensive rifle scope. And sometimes those things that you sacrifice with a cheap rifle scope are worth it. Now, depending on what you're using your gun for is what you're going to use, what kind of scope you're going to get. For example, if you buy a cheap 22 and you're only going to bring it to the range and shoot 40 or 50 yards and that's all you're ever going to do with the gun, it may not be a bad idea to save your money and buy a cheaper scope for it. Because um, you're not going to have to adjust for windage, you're not going to have to adjust for elevation. You can set it, leave it alone, and if it breaks, it's cheap enough where you can buy a new one. Now, this is not the case for guns you're going to be using for hunting. If you're going to be hunting, you really need a gun that has good turrets that are going to adjust for windage and elevation. Um, you're not going to make clean shots if you can't adjust these. Well, I mean, you may be able to figure out and do that in your head and just shoot based on what you know. And maybe you spent some time with your scope and learned how to shoot without adjusting the turrets. But if you're going to be hunting, you're hunting over short range, long range, you need to be able to adjust these. If you're going one day and you're hunting at 50 yards, the next day you're hunting at 300, you have to be able to do adjust these and they have to be true. Um, one of the biggest problems with cheap rifle scopes is that the turrets aren't accurate. They say a quarter inch, but you maybe have to turn them six, seven times and they might move half an inch. Then next time you turn it once and it moves a quarter inch. Next time it moves a quarter inch. Next time you got to move it three times to get a quarter inch. They're just not accurate. The gears are probably plastic and, and, and aren't the greatest in a cheap scope. So with the guns that I have cheap scopes, I tend to set the turrets and leave them because you can't trust them when you adjust them. And if you know that and it is just a range gun, that's fine. There's no reason why you can't use a cheap rifle scope for a range gun, especially this gun, which I shoot typically at the range, and I only ever shoot 100 yards with it. So I really don't need to make the adjustments. So this cheaper uh, center point scope is just fine for this. Uh, however, if I were to bring this varmint hunting, not the case. Now likewise, if you're going to be going into, you know, real markmanship, entering into contests, this scope's not going to cut it. The turrets aren't accurate enough, and there's a few other problems you do have with cheaper scopes. Um, one is that you can't find the true zero on the scope. Uh, there's kind of like a tube within a tube with these and your turrets adjust those tubes within the tube and the, the crosshairs are usually on the end of that, that little mini tube in there. So when you mount your scope you do want that little tube inside with the crosshairs on it to be at the zero in the scope. And the way to do that is to adjust it all the way to one end, the other count the clicks and then put it in the middle. Uh, there's also another method you can do with uh, putting a mirror in front of it. Um, and if someone's interested in that, I can do a video on it. Um, but if you don't have your scope at true mechanical zero, you're already basically cockeyed on your rifle. 
So as you go to make those adjustments, you know, you're not going to, they're not going to be 100% accurate because you're not, you know, you may be halfway to your left, so you go to adjust to your left and you run out of room. But then you've got a ton of adjustment to your right, up and down, etc. So if, you know, if you really need to adjust for elevation and windage, you can't have a cheap scope. Sorry. Um, this one here is a mill dot. So I've taken this out and shot this out to 200 yards, and I know that at 200 yards, with the bullets I use for this gun, I can aim one and a half mil dots down at 200 yards. But that's a rare occasion I fire at 200, and I know how to make that adjustment because I fire this gun a lot. Good example of how to make a cheap scope work. Now, as for myths about these things, most scopes are made very well. Um, most scopes don't break nowadays. Um, and uh, yeah, but, uh, I should probably take that back. You know, there are a lot of really cheap garbage out there that will break. But most scopes, like the center point, is pretty cheap, but it's not garbage cheap. This gun will, or this scope will probably never break. And according to their their literature, I believe it's tested up to 50 caliber, which is nice. Now, optics wise, this fifty dollar scope and your very very nice loophole scope. The optics are really not that much different. I mean, yes, you're going to have better quality lenses and better quality scopes. But in reality, if you're only firing 100 yards, you don't need top-notch lenses. The ones that are in here are just fine. Now, however, if you're firing 500, 600 yards, these are going to be blurry as hell. So, scope like this, great for 50, 100 yards. Nothing you're going to be able to take out two, three, four, five hundred 500 yards and be accurate with. You know, you just don't have the adjustments you need. You're not going to be able to find that true mechanical zero to keep your gun at its best accuracy. And plus the lenses, you know, are probably not going to be clear out there. Um, another problem with cheap scopes. Uh, parallax. You know, some of them don't have parallax adjustments. And another thing is with the zoom, a lot of cheap scopes, you'll set them at, like this one's a 3 by 9 You'll set it at 9, take a shot. Boom, you're dead on. You drop it down to five, you take a shot, boom, you're shooting left. Uh, because they do move the mirrors a little bit, a lot of these cheap scopes aren't very precise and can throw your, they can throw your zero off while changing magnification. So another good point to know, you know, a lot of people say, oh my God, this cheap scope is garbage because every time they shoot it, they change their magnification and they, of course, get a, you know, their bullets are everywhere. You know, it's not a problem with the scope, it's just that the magnification throws a zero off because you're moving, you know, internal parts around and that throws off your zero. Not a problem with good high quality scopes. They, you know, they compensate. I don't know how they do it mechanically, but it's compensated for so that your zero typically stays from three to nine. That's why you're paying the extra money is to get over these little things. Um, so lots of times you'll see people, someone will take a scope like this, this cheap little center point, which I believe is made by UTG, by the way. And they give it a bad review. They say, well, geez, you know, number one, you know, I couldn't adjust it very far to the left. And then two, you know, it was blurry out at 500 yards. And three, you know, it wouldn't hold zero. Is there anything wrong with the scope? No, it would hold zero. It's just that moving that causes changes in it. The optics are just cheap optics and aren't going to hold up to 500 yards. You know, the turrets aren't accurate. You know, so trying to use a cheap scope out of what its, use, what, its, what its usefulness is, is what gets people in trouble. But if you're just looking for the range, short, yard, short distances, no adjustments on the scope, just set it and leave it forever, cheap scopes are perfectly fine. But, you know, you can't take the scope and put this on a gun and fire competitively. You can't put this on a, on a gun and fire for varmint. It's just not enough scope. So I hope this clarifies this with some of the problems with scopes and the differences between cheap and expensive scopes. Um, because, you know, I do get a lot of, you know, I, I often give people advice, you know, hey, you can put a cheap scope on that gun because it's a range gun. And people say, no, don't do that. You know, if you're telling them, you know, crazy, their whole family's going to die because someone's going to break into their house and their scope's going to fail them. And yada, yada, yada. You know, stupid comments. You know, the scope's got to fit the gun. If it's your cheap plinker gun, cheap plinker scope. If it's your 500-yard varmint gun, 
you need a 500 yard varmint scope and that means money. So I hope it clears it up. Any questions or comments feel free to leave them. Um, and just remember when you're, you're looking at these scopes and you're putting these things on, a lot of these problems that you read about in reviews are not the scope. They're the person trying to use the scope for what it's not made for. Um, and bear in mind things like that, that the uh, these scopes will change their zero based on the zoom and the optics will move and yada 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 when you're reading reviews because a lot of people leave bad reviews because they just don't know what they're doing. But a scope like this, terrific if you use it for what it's meant for. And I hope it clarifies that. Feel free to uh, leave me some nasty comments if you disagree on this one. But I hope this clarified my opinion and why I do sometimes push cheaper scopes when I'm leaving comments for people and personal messages. It's not that I have anything against the expensive scopes or I'm saying, not saying they're not worth the quality, but I'm just saying for certain purposes, a cheap scope is adequate. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate your views.